One of the criticisms of most romantic movies is that they are so formulaic. Sure, there are variations, but the basic progression of boy meets girl, or girl meets girl, boy meets boy, seems to follow the same steps. And that's because most non-movie relationships do tend to follow a predictable path, and art is trying to imitate life, albeit with lots of exaggeration and improbable plot lines. To better understand why that path goes where it does, it helps to know the basic assumptions of the stages approach to explaining how interpersonal relationships develop. And let's not narrow it down to just romantic relationships. Most friendships and even business relationships tend to travel the same path. While one of the earliest explanations of how relationships develop is Mark Knapp's staircase model, other scholars have developed their own versions, like B.B. Beebe and Redmond's elevator model and Joseph DeVito's six-stage model. All of these models, however, have the same underlying principles and assumptions behind them. That's what this video will focus on, a brief explanation of relational models that use the stages approach and assumptions related to how movement occurs within and between the stages. The basis for these explanations comes from well-known communication scholar and author Mark Knapp, Professor Emeritus at the University of Texas, Austin, and the originator of the Staircase Model. I was able to track down a copy of his 1978 book, Social Intercourse, From Greeting to Goodbye, which is the foundation of this video, with some additional input from other scholars. Let's start our discussion with some of the models that are used to describe how relationships go from beginning to end and everywhere in between. You'll see the models displayed in various forms. Joseph DeVito's six-stage model uses the circles and connectors common to molecular models. You will also see a staircase as Mark Knapp's metaphor, and elevators are used by Stephen Beebe, Susan Beebe, and Mark Redmond as the carrying vehicle for their model. Some of my students design models using a car stick shift, mountains, game boards, roller coasters, and so on. All of these models are designed to show that relationships go through various stages. For example, you need to go through a meeting stage before you can move on to another stage, say, spending time together. Using Knapp's staircase metaphor, you need to put your foot on the first step before you can step up to the next. While the number of stages varies based on the version, the underlying premises are the same. For our metaphor, let's use escalators, which are those moving stairs that go up and down to bring you to different floors in a building. Escalators come in a set, one devoted to going up toward the top floors and one going down. In a relationship, the top floor would be the greatest intimacy, with the bottom floor your way out of the building, ending the relationship. Oh, and don't confuse intimacy with sex. Each escalator stops at the same floors, but you have to switch sides to take the other escalator. Got this image? Now onto the premises. These are in no particular order and not as comprehensive as what you'll get if you read Knapp's book. Remember that the basic assumption is that relationships move up and down through stages, as well as across and back. First, as relationships are unique, not all relationships will go through each of the stages or stop at each of the floors. It's common to get to, say, the third stage or the third floor and decide that you're satisfied there and don't need to go any further or that you are dissatisfied there and want to pull back from the relationship, moving to yet a different stage. There are various ways you can move through stages, but relationships tend to move through the stages systematically and sequentially. That means you tend to go through the stages in order. Knapp suggests several reasons for this. One is that each stage contains important presuppositions to the following stage. You need to find out what you have in common to determine if there is promise for a relationship probably helpful if you plan to move to the next stage of spending time together pursuing common interests. A second reason is that by going through the stages in order you can better predict what will happen in future stages. And a third is that by skipping stages you are risking a lot. Sometimes that risk can pay off. I know of some couples who jump from just meeting each other to marriage without going through the intermediary stages and sometimes it's due to life changes like a partner dying. But most of the time, it is disastrous, especially if one of the partners is less than trustworthy. Relationships are always changing, meaning there will always be movement. So it shouldn't be a surprise that movement occurs between stages, classified by Knapp as forward or backward. You can continue on the up escalator going to the top floor, moving forward, 
or switch over to the down escalator moving backward or toward the bottom floors. Any movement to the top of the building towards greater intimacy in a relationship is considered forward. Any movement downward away from the top floor or the escalator heading there is considered backward. If you are moving upward and get off on a floor, that's fine, as long as you aren't making a commitment to moving forward or backward, Knapp says you are stabilizing. But if you move horizontally over to the down escalator, you are starting to move backward, away from intimacy. However, even when you return to a previous stage, you will always go to a different place. You can't go back to exactly the way you were. Even if the why can't we go back to being just friends works, the friendship will be different. And movement occurs within stages. You don't just get off on a floor and stand there. You move around. All your experiences and interactions will color future experiences. So even when you are still on the same floor, you are in a different place. Related, you can choose to remain in a particular relationship stage for a while, not getting back on the escalator to go up more or down away. But even then, you are moving around in the stage, as you may argue, moving over a bit to the other escalator, and then making up, all while still remaining on that floor. BBBB and Redmond, developers of the elevator model, acknowledge that some relationships can be on again, off again. These are often extreme movements between stages, like the relationship ending suddenly due to one partner changing their mind, or external life factors like someone having to move across country. The next time they meet, they likely spend some time in the earlier stages, but depending on the relationship, could end up in the same stage they were in before the abrupt exit. Not surprisingly, then, is that the rate of speed going through the stages can vary. If you've been there before, say, rekindling a friendship, you probably will spend less time getting to know each other on the bottom floor before you take the escalator to move to higher floors. If you are cautious or external factors make it difficult to spend time together, you could spend a significant time small talking before you finally make the move up to the next floor. What gets you to move from floor to floor? BBBB and Redmond introduce the concept of turning points, which are specific events or interactions that signal positive or negative changes in a relationship. You might be in the small talk stage with someone when all of a sudden you are forced to work together as a team. This may be a positive experience, leading your relationship to the next level, or a negative one, causing you to avoid each other. And all of these are just fine. That's how relationships work. And if you haven't figured it out yet, relationships are complicated. In fact, even Mark Knapp acknowledges that the most frequent criticism of his model, and indeed this applies to similar stage models, was that it made it look too linear and too predictable. But with your understanding of the underlying assumptions related to how we navigate through the stages of friendships, romantic and business relationships, from beginning to end and everywhere in between, it should make it easier for you to study the various stage models like Knapp's Staircase Model, BB and BB and Redmond's Elevator Model, and Joseph DeVito's Six Stage Model. At the very least, you are aware that relationships are constantly changing, moving both toward and away from intimacy and that intimacy is not the goal of every relationship you have, or will have. And I'll bet that from now on, you'll be able to more accurately predict what's going to happen in those over-the-top rom-com movies.